folks, it's Chris Thoreau here from Vancouver Urban Micro and I'm really happy to be presenting to you my new Home Microgreens production workshop series. If you're familiar with some of the stuff I've done before, it's been much more focused on commercial production and I've had a lot of requests over the years to do more home production tutorials and so I'm hoping that this system here is going to meet people's needs. Uh, the great thing I think about looking at home production is the overall, it's not that much different than commercial production. The production cycle is still the same, the infrastructure is very similar, uh, and the economics are very similar. So I think this is something that could start off as a hobby, uh, you know, a way of improving your health, becoming more food independent, uh, definitely saving you money, and over time it could be something that evolves into commercial production. So hopefully this meets uh, a wide range of needs and helps you better understand what microgreens production looks like. Uh, I've gone through a lot of the aches and pains and uh, trial uh, and error, so hopefully you don't have to, especially if you're looking to get a, a really quick start on things. So this series will basically look at production in sort of three major ways. One is going to be the infrastructure and space, you know, where are you going to do it and what do you need. Uh, it's going to look at the economics. It's going to cost some money to set up, but it's going to save you some money uh, once you get producing. And then we're going to look at the actual production as well, and how do you do a regular production cycle and troubleshoot problems along the way. So it's a very simple format, but it's going to give you a lot of information, like I said, that'll be good for both the home grower and the commercial grower. A big important part of this, uh, if you're thinking about this workshop series, is whether you have the space. Um, and I do recommend doing a setup in your kitchen, as I have done. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that, like finding space, making that space sort of blend into what you're already doing, uh, unless you want a system like this to really stand out. But the idea here is trying to integrate the system into what you already have uh, happening in your home. I've managed to develop a system that, that fits really well into my kitchen. I spend a lot of time in here cooking, and I wanted to have something that wasn't going to be disruptive and, and blended in really well. So we'll talk about that stuff. Um, most of your production is going to happen indoor. I've, Almost everything I need is actually right on the shelf here, with the exception of my soil, which I store outside on my balcony. So you need a, a bit of indoor space and a little bit of outdoor space, ideally. If you've got indoor storage for soil, great. Uh, but I'll probably do my soil and tray prep outside, just to keep uh, things a little cleaner inside. I may do some exploration with non-soil growing media. I am, uh, however, of the opinion that food should be grown in soil, and I'm going to keep pushing that uh, paradigm for as long as I possibly can. Um, just a few notes, your ideal production space will be uh, close to a window. Even though this system does have artificial lighting, having uh, natural uh, sunlight is going to make a big, big difference in crop quality. So that's really important to um, keep in uh, consideration. I have a shelf here that's vertical, so I can keep all my stuff within a pretty compact space. But I could have done my system up here even if I wanted to. So there's lots of ways you can lay a system like this out in your home. I recommend doing it in your kitchen, but it could be done in a living room, a basement, a bedroom, a spare room, something like that. Uh, those things get tedious after a while. And if you're thinking about commercial production in the future, this a kitchen is more like a commercial production space, so it gets you in that sort of mindset. Um, this system uh, is going to cost about $700 to set up and that may seem like a lot but that is all your infrastructure plus seeds and soil for more than a year's worth of production and in one year if you were to do two trays twice a week which you can do in this system you can produce about $3,300 worth of product so if you're looking to have fresh high quality uh, microgreens and wheatgrass uh, as well as save money this is going to do that your, um, your cost will only be about 20% of, of what your value is. So it's really going to save you a lot, especially if you're already buying uh, microgreens or wheatgrass from another source. The advantage here is you're going to always get the freshest stuff and you're going to know everything about it. So something to keep in mind, there's going to be a bit of investment up front. Uh, you might already have some of the components already. Uh, and, and getting in that, like I said, that includes seeds for a year, soil for a year, my wheatgrass juicer, everything I need for production. So it's a very thorough system. Um, so what I'm going to do for this series, I'm going to start out with uh, infrastructure. I'm going to go through the infrastructure, look at what it is, where to source it, and what your costs are going to be. 
Then I'm going to look at the economics more closely. Um, we'll look at those costs again of your infrastructure and then we'll start looking at your production costs, giving you a sense of how to break things down. That's not so important for home production on, on a weekly uh, basis, but I think knowing that uh, in the beginning gives you a sense of how much it costs for a tray uh, to make that tray and what the value of the product is you're getting in return. Whereas if you're going into commercial production, that financial side is something you want to be looking at quite regularly throughout a season. So it'll help prepare you for that if that's where you want to go. Once we've talked about infrastructure and economics, we're going to go into production. And I'm going to do a lot of production cycles here. I'm going to be able to show you stuff in real time. Uh, I'm also going to be able to do some time lapse here. And, you know, just little bits of troubleshooting and, and challenges that I've come up along the way. And what I can do is sort of take real time questions and feedback so we can do little intermittent videos. And in the end, I hope, uh, you know, there's no reason you shouldn't be very much a, a production expert within three to four months. So I'm really looking forward to doing this series. I hope you find it valuable. Um, depending where you're watching this, there might be some links below, either going to the website or where you can find more videos like this or to the Urban Micro face, uh, Facebook page. So I hope you enjoy this course and I'll see you soon.